Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we will find the confidence interval for a population mean using both the normal distribution or the sub-distribution and the t-distribution. Now, for this video, I prepared the examples that we'll be looking at with the questions. Now, just a reminder that the estimation or the confidence interval of the population mean is given in the formula over here, which is the mean, sample mean, minus the margin of error, sample mean plus the margin of error. And for this particular example, we're going to assume that if the population is normal, then we're going to use the Z distribution. If the population is not normal, and the sample size is less than 30, based on the central limit theorem, then we're going to use the T distribution. So, population, they say it's normal, or the sample size more than 30, we're going to use the normal distribution or the Z distribution. If it's not normal, or the sample size is less than 30, we're going to use the T distribution. Let's start with the first example. Here we're looking at tire manufacturer, which is to estimate the mean life expectancy of a new type of tire. And they did a testing. They found that the average is 95,500 kilometer with standard deviation of 3,500 kilometer. They're looking for the 95 confidence interval of this type of tire. So what's given to us is the mean standard deviation. and the sample size 120 tires and since they said 95 confidence interval then we're going to look at alpha or the level of significant 0 0.05 first let's find the margin of error for that we're going to go and look for a function called confidence And you can see that we have confidence.norm, which is the normal distribution or the Z distribution. And it says it returns the confidence interval for a population mean using the normal distribution. And the T is using the T distribution. Now, this is misleading in Excel because this function does not return the confidence interval. It just returns the margin of error. So let's see what it asks for. It asks for alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. It's going to ask us for the standard deviation and the sample size. Now here we're using the norm, even though we have the sample standard deviation, simply because the sample size is more than 30, which is 120. So again, here it says returns the confidence interval. In fact, it does not return the confidence interval. It's returning the margin of error. Let's make this two decimal places, or since it's kilometer, let's just remove the decimals. So now we can find the confidence interval. The confidence interval is basically what? The mean minus the margin of error, and the mean plus the margin of error. So the 95 confidence interval for this is basically 94,874 kilometers and 190,374 kilometers. Okay, so just keep in mind this returns the margin of error and not the confidence interval. For the second example, we're testing 20 power supplies. And we got that the mean is 10.17 volts, standard deviation 0 0.42. We want to estimate the 99% confidence interval. So also the given data is the mean, standard deviation, N, and alpha. So for this example, since 
the sample size is less than 20 and we have the sample standard deviation we're going to use the t distribution it's going to be the same idea it's going to ask for the alpha level significant the standard deviation and of course the size which is 20 and it's going to turn the margin for same idea we're going to take the mean minus the margin of error and the mean plus margin of error let's run to two decimal places and that means that the 99% confidence interval is between 9.90 volt and 10.44 volt. So this is if we have the mean standard deviation and so on. For the third example, here they didn't give us the mean standard deviation. They give us the data. They said the following data, which are which is sorted. It's a sample data for cholesterol level was obtained from a population of men who had heart attack. Compute the 98% confidence interval for the mean. So, in this particular example, the first thing we have to do is find the mean, which is the average. All of these data we're going to find the standard deviation and be careful here it's a sample standard deviation not a population we're going to find n so the count and alpha is we want it as 98% confidence level, so alpha is 0 0.02. So sample size more than 30, which means we're going to use the confidence.norm. We're going to pick alpha. We're going to pick the standard deviation and the sample size. Then the same, we're going to look at the mean minus the margin of error and the mean plus the margin of error and let's keep two decimal places as well so the cholesterol level is between 199.8 and 209.76 Okay, so this is if we have the mean or we have the confidence level and standard deviation. And if we have the data, we can just use the mean standard deviation to find this value. However, there is another method to do that. And let's look at this example. We have the data here as well, and this is the content of 12 40 gram bags of potato chips were weighted the weights to the nearest 0.1 are listed below compute the 95 percent confidence interval for the mean of 40 grams bags assume that the weight is normally distributed so here we have to do the same as in this example we have to find the mean we have to find the variance standard deviation and we have to find the margin of error however we're not going to do it separately we're going to be using the descriptive statistics in Excel. And we will see how descriptive statistics give us everything we need. So we're going to go to the data ribbon, click on data analysis. And we're going to choose descriptive statistics as we did in other videos where we looked for the mean, median, mode, standard deviation, and so on. Click OK. We're going to get the range of the values, which is this one's here. 
group by column. I didn't pick the label. Output range. Let's put the output over here. Let's move it one down so we have space here for the answers. I want the summary statistics, and this is what we did in the first video when we did some descriptive statistics. Now, in addition to the mean, median, and mode, I want the confidence level for the mean. So I'm going to check this, and by default, it's 95% confidence level. We want 99%, so I'm going to change it to 99, and click OK. So you see that this is the mean that we're looking for, and I don't need the standard deviation. I don't need the sample size because it does give me the confidence level. Or, again, it's the margin of error from Excel. So I'm going to select this as the margin of error. And here I'm going to type the mean minus confidence level or the margin of error, the mean plus the margin of error. So always remember that Excel gives us the margin of error, not the confidence level, which means that the confidence level is, let's round to two decimal places, or here since the mean is 0 0.1, let's round to one decimal place, and we're going to see that it's 42.8 gram to 44.0 gram. So here we could have done just as we did in the previous example, found the mean, median, and sorry, mean, standard deviation, and margin of error, or we can use descriptive statistics to find all of that. The last example, they give us the five cigarettes brand or randomly selected. The tar contents in milligram were found to be these five things, assume a normal population, population and establish a 99% confidence interval. So here, we found the mean using the average. And I'm going to find the confidence level or the margin of error using descriptive statistics without finding the other data. Just to show you that, you can do that without the need to find the rest of the stuff. So we're going to select our data, which is only these five. Output range, let's put it here. And I don't want the summary statistics. I just need the confidence level, and it is 99, so I'm not going to change anything. Press OK. This is our confidence level. So you can find the confidence level or the margin of error without the need to find all of this as we did over here. So what's left for us to do is, that's the margin of error. The lower part is the mean minus the margin of error. And this is the mean plus the margin of error. And let's... Keep two decimal places, and it's going to be 19.05 milligram to 23.75 milligram. So in this video, we saw how we find the confidence level using several methods. Just remember that the descriptive analysis uses the T distribution to find the margin of error. It doesn't use the normal distribution. Don't forget to subscribe to my video, to my channel and look for other videos. Have a great day.